Welcome back to Control. Last episode we fought, was it Tomasi or Tomasi? I'm assuming the name is Finnish, but I'm not actually sure if it is or not. Um, anyway, before we continue from the mailroom, which is where we defeated them, I want to try this again. I know it didn't seem like I had the health to do it, and I probably don't, but I'm just going to sprint in there and then try to use a canister and try to run out. Let's get a running start. Ah. Personal mod launch efficiency. Sounds nice. Don't suppose you would keep items you got before you died when you respawn? I mean, maybe. It could be the case that it just resets your position, but not your progress. Oh yeah, it does. There it is. Launch efficiency. Launch energy cost minus 8%. That doesn't seem worth it compared to health recovery per element pickup plus 20%. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. Put this on my desk eating my audio cords and stuff. I've also seen him eating and messing around and playing with my cords, and then seconds later, mysteriously, my network disconnects. Hmm. I wonder what could have caused that, Pippa. Okay, so now this is new stuff. Heading on for the mail room. <laughs> that is so cool looking. Jeez. And that, the way that looks... Reminds me of, uh... Something about, like, engines. You know how engines on the inside often have a lot of really, really tightly coiled copper? Sorry. Butte Summary. Uh, Butte Altered World Event 17. A spate of disappearances was traced to a home in the city of Butte where bureau agents discovered a translocative light switch cord. <laughs> bureau agents arrived at the home of a local celebrity, located at something, which had been connected to a total of something disappearances in the area. Agents found no one inside. While searching a closet, an agent pulled the light switch cord and disappeared from view. Another agent was selected to pull the cord in order to replicate the event. He disappeared as well. Both agents were discovered at the oldest house something days later, found in a sealed room by rangers exploring a new area of the house. The light switch cord in the Butte home's closet disappeared during this incident. Hmm. I wonder how many of these objects of power were going to accumulate over time. Ooh, can we read that? Uh, no. I wonder if I turn the texture quality up more, if I would be able to read it. Actually, I think it's maxed. Um, high. Oh no, it can go to ultra. Well, let's try it. It's not any better. How am I supposed to play when little puppas on my desk like that looking so sweet and messing up my keyboard? How do I game, little baby boy? I can't. Oh. Oh, no, don't eat my cords. No, no, don't. Well, just know if I get into combat, I am going to be at a severe disadvantage. Advantage. I'm just, I keep looking at him because I'm like, you better not go for my mic cords. Don't go for my mic cords. No. <laughs> They're eating the audio output. Okay, I got them off my desk. Gosh, they're cute though. Now they're eating a scratching post like a beaver. All right, take this down. 
The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hands of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have damage to the inner ear, but most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged their cellular walls, but we can't blame that on some stupid noise gun. <laughs> Thank God no local doctors examined them first. Honestly, where the odds an alternate item would show up inside a U.S. Embassy? Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier to... Hey, are you still recording this? <laughs> Why is there duct tape over that sector? What sector is that? And what do these little blips represent? Data centers that are online or something? Alberto Tomasi, head of comms. Tomasi's ID. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. Alberto Tomasi. Classic quote. Love that one. So can I use that? It's a, under reports, but it's an ID. Could I use that to get in somewhere? Oh, what is Hiss Elevated? Oh, that's for Tomasi. Hiss Elevated agents display abilities similar to telekinetic competencies observed in Bureau Peri-Utilitarians. Some prefer to charge their targets while others launch, launch objects at them. Telekinetic attacks have been ineffective against the Hiss Elevated due to their own talent in the area. They do not use any weaponry except their own paranatural capabilities. Some Hiss Elevated have been levitating while strapped into chairs. This is likely the result of individuals being corrupted while undergoing cognitive recording in parapsychology. How are they able to use paranatural abilities? Is it possible that these individuals were bound to objects of power prior to corruption? It's also worth considering that the Hiss Resonance can identify and express latent paranatural ability in the individuals it corrupts. The Hiss got him. The hotline can't be far now. Someone's calling for the hotline. Accuracy boost. Accuracy plus 5%. Uh, I don't know. That compared to plus 7 or minus 7% cost per shot. Eh, sure. <laughs> I love that. Supplement. According to their testimony, the agents had been transported from the Butte home to a roadside motel named the Ocean View Motel and Casino, and discovered a room key by performing a ritual. The key opened a door marked with an inverted black pyramid, which they only learned after a lengthy period of trial and error. After pulling another motel cord found inside this room, they were transported to the oldest house. The disappearances of the home's owner and the other locals of Butte have been attributed to the light switch cord. The Ocean View Motel is now known to have many doors and pathways. Since the occurrence, identical light switch cords to the one found in the Butte home have begun appearing throughout the oldest house. At the time of writing, something like cords have been found in the oldest house located in the... Uh, these all access the Ocean View Motel, though how exactly this link operates is something... But initial hypotheses center on the Butte Altered World event. Didn't take me to it. Hotline security log. Hmm. 
So these are going back for the last two months, roughly. Mostly Director Trench, a couple times Bill Everett. And then most recently, Carol Bishop. They've never appeared before. That's the first time they appeared, and they're the most recent one, which is a little bit suspicious, I guess. sound of that phone somewhere in this is really cool too. And this material, this looks like soundproofing foam. Sort of stuff you'd see in an anechoic chamber. Oh, look at that strip of blue light on us. Oh, there's the phone, I think, on a table over there. I guess we're going to the ocean view. Stand here. Notice ocean view motel and casino entry point. Catalyst light switch. The law of three applies. Law of three? What, you gotta press it three times? Ritual attunement required. Agent must orient and anchor motel to their personal frequencies. Here before? No. I've stayed at a lot of roadside motels across the country, on the road, on the run, under the radar. This feels like all of them, like something recognized from a dream. There's the upside down pyramid. There's different symbols on all these doors. Smoky Western Blend. Miners are forbidden. You really can read almost everything written on the wall and everything. Oh, I love it. Self-service vending machine for all your needs. All my needs like blank, 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 and blank. Hello? Anyone here? Wait, that did something. That was... Oops. That was changing the lights. It's opening doors. I gotta remember the law of three. I think this is where it was on three hits. But I'm curious what's in the other doors first, of course. Fairways. Is this the same room as the first? 
Let's look at the painting. Oops. Yeah, let's look at the painting. Bunch of people on horseback going through a river. Yeah, they are the same. And look at these lights. Are these like those UV antibacterial ones? Key has a black pyramid on it. You can see the wall in some places. It's just like a massive, cavernous, anechoic chamber. And the extra creepy thing is that in a chamber like this, there wouldn't really be any reverb, because it would deaden all the sound, and yet that phone... to contact extra-dimensional entities. Well, that's an extra-dimensional entity. Am I supposed to kill it, though? Feels violent, but it's not trying to hurt me right now, so I guess I'll wait. Yep. No, no, no. It's not good. It gets smaller and then regrows. I think I have to hit it with two very fast. Or... Or maybe I'm just supposed to get around it. Yeah, okay, I think I just get around it then. God, the movement looks so good, doesn't it? of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. A direct
director needs a team. My management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do. Some even better. Darling, Tomasi, Salvador, Marshall. Marshall especially, my head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. But things change when you become director. I have it. The hotline. I can reach Trench. Well, listen to him. He feels more like an echo. An echo with important info. I need to get back to Emily. People react strongly when I tell them about you. Is it too soon to tell Emily? She might be able to help. When Trench was talking, that was the first time that I think I realized, I think the voice actor for Trench was also the voice actor for Max Payne in their previous games. Pretty sure that's the same voice actor. See, I know that Max Payne was uh, visually modeled after somebody who actually works in Remedy, Sam Lake. It was visually modeled after them, but I don't think they did the voice acting. Let me check. Aha, I was right. Yeah, the voice actor for Max Payne, who is the voice actor for Trench, is not Sam Lake, but James McCaffrey. Thought I recognized that voice. Oh, so... Wait a minute, somewhere here, the hotline has appeared. And we can talk about things. Bureau slash game. <laughs> game? Control points. It took us a long time to learn how to stabilize the control points, the ley lines, the meridians of the oldest house. Darling found a way to soothe this beast. We discovered we must cleanse control points of all interference. It's my duty as the director, like Northmore before me. I couldn't manage it in my own house, at my home. I'll damn well do it here. Without the control points, the oldest house would swallow us alive. We'd be sealed inside an endless labyrinth. No one would hear our screams. If an enemy ever managed to corrupt the control points, it'd be over fast, spreading like a cancer, leaping over the fire breaks like a crown of fire. They are the weak point. Darling's right about that. He's wrong about everything else. Dangerously wrong. Suspiciously wrong. Has he been compromised? Ah, oh, so that's why this one, where I talked to the board, why well, that was so different from the control points, because I was speaking directly with the Trench, so they spoke directly with us, but the board is that weird pyramid thing that speaks in, not exactly riddles, but speaks in a strange way. I can hear the hotline ringing in my dreams, constantly ringing, ringing so loud I can't hear the voice I'm straining to understand. Why don't I pick up? It's a secure line of communication with the board. They would tell me what I need to know. Do I fear their answers? Would they have warned me of this threat? I didn't see it coming. The traitor in our midst. A conspiracy plotted right behind me. I can't trust anyone. I must assume all my intel has been manipulated. The hotline is the only channel I can trust. 
bind it, control it. The rule and the ritual with objects of power. It can't be tampered with. The lifeline to the astral plane and the board. I must seek guidance. Soon. I'll rest first. I'm so tired. Always tired now. But I must reach the hotline. I think I'm under attack. An attack of dementia. Exhaustion. It's a brain cloud making me forget. The hotline. I must reach the hotline. The more I think about it, the more I realize that I have literally no idea what the board is. What is the board? I mean, I know the triangle thing, and I know they've talked to us before, but what are they? A director needs a team. Oh, My we package. already saw this. These people know the secrets of the Bureau. The Ocean View Motel and Casino is a familiar friend to me. I stayed in countless motels like it while investigating AWEs across the country, back in my field agent days. Those roadside motels all bleed together like a dream. Same and not the same. Anywhere and nowhere. The Ocean View operates on dream logic, and the light switch cord leaks out to be found in the most unexpected places and sometimes successfully encouraged to appear and act as a convenient lock to keep out those not trained in dreamscape navigation. Even Bureau veterans can only find one key in the motel, the key that opens the door marked with the inverted black pyramid. The rest, the many other doors, are still mysteries to us. We're all merely guests there. Even the board. Sometimes I need to visit, just to breathe easier for a while. It beats the numb, sterile apartment I spend my nights in, insulated from everything but myself. I guess that's where the whiskey comes in. Something's coming. The whispers growing louder. The worst winter storm in Bureau history. Retribution for my sins. Our sins. This threat could destroy the Bureau. Everything I've built. Destroy me. A web spun turning this place against me. I catch glimpses of it in the corner of my eye. It's just out of reach. Elusive. It's clever. A perverse game of hide and seek. Is this part of an attack? Obfuscating the facts. Dimming my eyes. It's hard to tell. I need answers. I haven't heard back from Darling. I fear for my friend, my closest ally. I think we made a terrible mistake all those years ago. That thing he studies is putting us all in danger. It's my duty as director to keep the Bureau safe. It'll be difficult. What's done can't be undone. There's no easy fix. Magical thinking is a requirement for survival. Pain and suffering are mandatory. To change things, you have to break yourself. I don't know if I have the strength. I'm old and weak. I'm afraid. I can see my hands trembling. I'm losing control. I love the mood of those conversations. They're not they're not really conversations, but Monologues. I love the mood of the monologues. It reminds me of those... Those, um... 
In Max Payne, I think the cutscenes had a like graphic novel kind of style and super noir -y and it reminds me of that a bit. I, although I think a lot of it is just the fact that the voice actor who did Max Payne is the one speaking. <laughs> but also, it's just moody. Very moody. Was there... Was there always two doors? No. No, there wasn't. I came into a door, and then the only way to go was here. Mm -mm. Right? Yeah, I don't think this existed. Ah, oh, this is going to lead to the director's office, remember? It seemed like there was a thing connected to the director's office. Now we're coming at it from the other side, I think. Yeah, but it's not a secret door. Or it is, but it opened without us. <laughs> God, I don't know. The oldest house is strange, isn't it? Hmm. I guess they cleaned up the body. I hope that's what happened. Trench, Bureau Funding. To all executive staff, I know there's some concern regarding our operations exceeding the annual budget. So long as we operate within the oldest house, we are obscured from scrutiny in many respects. If our budget demands are not exorbitant to the point of drawing attention, they will be granted by the U.S. Treasury without question. The FBC is just another line in another spreadsheet that some lowly accountant won't even notice. Their eyes will skip over us, as if we weren't even there. The nature of the oldest house allows us certain freedoms in how we operate. Our being here is no accident. That's fascinating, the power of the oldest house and how it makes people not notice it is so strong that it doesn't even matter if you're near the oldest house. You don't have to be anywhere near it. Just something as simple as seeing the place mentioned on a spreadsheet, it's still powerful enough to make you not pay attention and just skip over it. Okay, we're supposed to go back to Emily. Oh, hey. We got these level 1 security clearance a little while ago. Unfortunately, it doesn't show security clearance places on the map, but we may come across doors that we couldn't open but now can. Have I been here? I guess not. Technological restrictions. The oldest house imposes certain limitations on our bureau, but by far the most restrictive is the inability to use certain technological instruments. The oldest house does not allow devices that receive or emit any something signal. Radio waves are the only transmittable signals in the oldest house, and even those are often unreliable. If the power of collective unconscious is taken into account, it could be that certain pieces of technology are too new in the cultural something for the oldest house to something them. Similarly, these items have now been known to become receptacles for altered status. Technology may be moving at too fast a pace for this something to occur. Modern technology tends to disappear and break here, sometimes quite violently. Some number of agents have been injured by cell phones exploding in their pockets while entering the oldest house. Hmm, I guess that explains why everything looks so dated. That's really interesting. Hmm. Pistachio. I love pistachio. God, I just love how detailed everything is. Look, a bunch of flags. What were they marking here? Last encounter was there, at that place. You know the place.
shifted bathroom complaint. Listen, I know you can't control building shifts, but the executive level restroom has been missing for weeks now. <laughs> I worked my ass off in the Islamabad station for three years. I've earned the right to a, ni a nice workplace shitter. If you can't bring it back, at least find out where it went. Where's this? Have I been here before? I, I don't think so. I don't think I've been here either. But if I hadn't been here, surely I, there would be something to pick up. Bureau expenditures, staffing, oh, major expenditures are staffing, surveillance, something, data center initiative, construction, minor or office equipment, janitorial costs, mold removal, HQ livability costs. Did you get the hotline? I mean, how is it out there? The comms? The hiss? Sorry. You made it. I'm glad. Emily? Let's talk. <laughs> They're so excitable. It's cute. Hiss research. Initial impressions. Initial encounters with the entity known as the hiss have revealed various behavioral facts. Most notably, the hiss is able to invade or corrupt control points, altered items, and even humans, radically changing their behavior. Curiously, any person wearing one of the wearable HRA devices that Dr. Darling has been distributing over the past weeks was not affected by this corruption. The only known exception to this fact is the new director, Jesse Faden, who possesses an inherent immunity to the hiss. This could indicate that she has already been corrupted, but her behavior is so in contrast to that of the other Hiss that I have dismissed the theory. My final observation comes from Miss Faden herself. She is able to cleanse material and organisms of the Hiss corruption. We tested this ability on a Hiss corrupted entity, but unfortunately the process seems to kill the host. Perhaps the host's physiology becomes reliant on the Hiss. More work to be done. I got the hotline. I can make out what Trench is saying now. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team. People who knew the Bureau secrets. Your boss, darling. Tomasi, but he's gone. He has gone. Salvador? He's the head of security. And Marshall? Helen Marshall is head of operations. She's tough, ex-CIA. She took her rangers and went to the research sector to secure the HRA production. She hasn't come back. Someone who could help us. The other sectors. How do I get there? It's impossible because of the internal lockdown. You can perform a directorial override to lift it, but that can only be done in the maintenance sector. Normally, you take the sector elevator down there. It connects all the sectors, but it won't work while the lockdown is in effect. We already got past one lockdown. Maybe I can find a way. Jesse, look, with no prep, no training, in this extreme situation, you are doing phenomenally well. And all that and the hiss can't seem to affect you. I mean, I would love to run some tests on you. If you agree, that is. We could find out something that would help us. Tests? I don't know. She might find out about you. But I wouldn't mind understanding more myself. Okay. If you think it will help. 
Great. I'll check the internal documentation for any lockdown bypasses. We need to get these sectors open to locate Darling and Marshall. And I'll look for a way inside the maintenance sector. The sooner we find one, the sooner I reach this override. override upgrade and unlock new abilities from the nearest control point okay so we can spend our level or ability point or whatever we can also talk more hi jesse wait um what have we not talked about before I thought the icon over them implied they had something new to talk about, but haven't we already mentioned all these? That's why they're grayed out. Thanks, Emily. I'm sure I'll have more questions soon. Just let me know. Huh. Okay, what do we have here? Personal mod, energy boost plus 5%. I'm good. New mission. Search for a way into the maintenance sector. Hotline. Containment procedure. Object, object should be inaccessible for use except to the director. Description. Object is a 1960s era red Bakelite telephone. The rotary dial has been replaced with a black knob of unknown purpose. The phone weighs some redacted amount. The object allows the director to communicate with the... I assume that says board. If used by anyone other than the director, the object will cause lethal... Whoa. Background. The object spontaneously manifests in the director's office, placed on the desk. Director Northmore was the first known bureau agent to use it. Origin remains unknown. Hey, we've seen all these, right? Oh, wait a minute. We haven't seen the Darling presentation on the hotline. Ring, ring. It's Dr. Darling calling. In 1978, a comms department intern heard the hotline ring and picked it up, going against every safety protocol in the manual. She never recovered. And the handful of witnesses required... Extensive memory repression therapy. It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is, under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well, our very own Ouija board. Only the director can answer it safely, and what he hears is kept classified. <laughs> I thought Dr. Darling sounded familiar. I just looked him up. They're played by Matthew Porretta, who also voice acted Alan Wake, which was Remedy's previous game. Whoa, do I have five ability points? No, I had one before. Where did those four come from? And actually, did I read everything? Hotline. I have not talked to the board about board countermeasures.
Okay. Thanks. Do you hear that? Someone's singing. Where is it coming from? <laughs> <laughs> 